Recall that it was Benjamin Franklin who first uh, identified uh, the concept of electric force. Fast forward uh, a, a few decades later, and we have the French uh, physicist uh, Coulomb who went ahead and penned an equation that represents the electric force that is experienced between two charges. Most electric forces ha must be pretty strong because they can actually uh, produce accelerations larger than the acceleration of gravity. Now, bear in mind that, of course, a charge is relatively small. It has a very tiny mass, and that would allow for it to go ahead and generate an acceleration larger than gravity. The magnitude of the charge of an electron, the magnitude, the magnitude of a charge of an electron is going to be E. So if you see a lowercase e, that's what that represents. And uh, we call this e the elementary charge. Now the elementary charge was, um, was, uh, is going to be denoted by the lowercase q, and the unit for it is the Coulomb. Okay? So the symbol, the symbol for a charge is going to be lowercase q. And the unit is going to be capital C for Coulomb. Do not confuse this with Celsius. This is a Coulomb. One, one, uh, the value of an elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. This is a tiny number. So you, your cell phone calculators will not help you here. You must have a scientific calculator that can handle these kinds of exponents. Uh, for more information about where this number came from, you can look into Robert Millikan. He was a Nobel P, a Nobel Peace Prize winning physicist who had an oil drop experiment and there's plenty of YouTube videos on this short ones that explain exactly what happened but it's pretty fascinating and it'll help you understanding uh, if you look into that okay now of course if, if it's a proton it'll be positive 1.6 and if it's an electron it'll be negative 1.6 so for a proton It'll be positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. If it's an electron, the only thing that changes is a negative in the front. Okay? We do not change the power of the exponent. That always remains at negative 19. Okay? Here we present to you Coulomb's law, the electric force, that's what the subscript E is for, is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared. A better way to write this would be K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. So just put the K on top in the numerator. Okay. R is the distance between the particles. K is a fancy number, 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. If I write that out the long way, that's a Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared, okay? Q1 and Q2 will be charges, and those will be uh, in Coulombs, okay? Now, in this above equation, if we, if we calculate the value of this, if we actually have the values and plug them in and calculate it, if it comes, to be, uh, comes out to be a negative answer, that means it's going to be attraction. If the answer comes out to be positive instead, it's going to be repulsive. So keep that in mind, okay? And for those of you wondering, let's look at problem one. Explain why the above statement is true. So if Q1 and Q2 are both positive and I multiply them, it also comes to be positive as well. Recall that in the numerator, the two charges are multiplying, okay? K is gonna be positive and R is a distance it's going to be positive because distances are positive, okay? So based on the equation, just the math itself, if we multiply two positives, we, we get a positive. Now, if we have two negatives, mathematically, that also comes to be a positive as well. We recall from uh, earlier discussions that when charges have the like sign, they repel each other, okay? So this is hence the reasoning why if we get a positive answer for this equation, then it, they must be repelling. And they're repelling because they have the same charge, they have the same sign. Perfect! If we have a negative and a positive, this ends up giving me a negative answer. So here we have two different 
uh, sign charges and they're going to end up giving me a negative answer. So if I get a negative answer, they're going to attract because they're different signs. Same thing with a positive and a negative. So for those of you that are wondering why is that the case, well, we present that to you. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. Problem two, what if? Let's talk about these what ifs. What if one charge is doubled? So recall we have F is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared. If I double the first charge, in order to keep this balance, I have to also double the force. So if I double one charge, in other words, if I if it's twice that the size, twice the charge, twice the magnitude, then I get twice the force. I get double the force. Perfect. What if instead both charges are doubled? Well, I multiply this one by two and I multiply this one by two. Again, to keep this balanced, I would have to also multiply the force by two and two as well. That means I end up not getting just two times two, we end up getting four times the force. So if we if both charges are doubled, then that means I have four times the force. <laughs> what if one charge were halved? So now it's smaller. It's half the charge the, the one charge is half the size. That would also half the force as well. What if the separation is doubled? The separation is R. So I gotta put this in parentheses. If I double the radius. Now keep this in mind. If let, let's just say instead of charges, think of magnets. Think of magnets, okay? And as you hold them close to each other, they're, they're, they're wanting to uh, attract to each other. If you doubled the distance between the two of them, if you f spread them further apart by a factor of two, wouldn't you notice that the attraction would be less? And so that's what we're proposing to do here. That we would, if we double the force, sorry, if we double the distance between the two charges, we actually end up with only one fourth of the force originally. So if we separate these charges, they're going to be less in proximity to each other and they'll be and they'll have less of an ability to exert uh, a repulsion or an attraction to each other because they're so far away essentially it's a long distance relationship and so it's not as as effective right now where does one fourth come from well bear in mind that we this is the numerator right and the denominator we would have four r squared and so this ends up being the same r squared as it originally, but now we have a one fourth, a four. So this is where the one fourth comes from. <laughs> now, using the magnet al analogy, what if we were holding two magnets, but instead of doubling the distance, we actually halved the distance. In other words, we brought those two magnets closer to each other. Now remember, we're talking about charges, not magnets, but you have an easier time visual visualizing magnets. So if the magnets were to come closer to each other, if you were to hold them closer to each other, we would naturally feel a stronger attraction between the two of them. So if I half them, mathematically this gives me one fourth r squared. But if I do keep flip change, this ends up being four times as strong. And of course, we recognize that if you hold, ma if you bring man magnets, for example, closer to each other, you're going to feel a stronger force. Okay. Now, why are we getting all these force now and before we didn't? Because this is squared. Okay. This is squared. So if the separation is halved, we would actually have four times the force. Notice that we get the same effect, right? What we could either double the charges, both of them. Or we could go ahead and, and and half the separation. We're going to end up getting four times the force, I believe, in both cases. Okay. For your summary, using Coulomb's law, how can you tell if the force is attractive or repulsive?